A new poll from the New York Times and Siena College shows Harris leads Trump in two key swing states. We're talking Arizona and North Carolina, while Trump leads in both Nevada and Georgia. Here with us is Democratic Congressman from Maryland, Glenn Ivey. Congressman, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show, I should say. Thanks for having me. Now, with that even split between those four battleground states, what do these numbers tell you, sir? Well, they certainly tell me things are moving in the right direction for the Harris campaign. I mean, I, I think it's been really amazing how quickly she's been moving up in the polls, the energy that's uh, bringing more volunteers to all of these campaign offices across the country and the money that's been flowing in. So, you know, things are moving in the right direction for the Harris campaign. I, the Trump campaign really seems to be going in the opposite direction, and they seem to be struggling with trying to find a message that uh, works. And, and an unusual thing in the 10 plus years that, that Trump's been a force in politics in America, he's really struggling to be in the story these days. It's, it's, it's surprising to me that, that how much they've lost their footing in this campaign. I do want to talk about Georgia because so much of 2020 came down to the Peach State. Surely her campaign is looking at these same, same numbers you and I are. What is your advice to gain lead back when it comes to Georgia? Well, I think they just need to keep doing more of the same. Uh, you know, she's been doing the campaign rallies across the country and focusing primarily on battleground states, but not solely. And I think the other part is, you know, really working up the ground game. The Trump uh, campaign and the RNC have diverted money, frankly, to his legal problems instead of putting it into uh, building up campaign offices and, and working out their, their grassroots campaigns efforts. Um, you know, the, the Harris campaign is the exact opposite. She inherited a strong structure from the Biden campaign. She's expanding that, and they're getting more volunteers on the street now because of uh, just the energy and the excitement. You know, people are just getting up and getting up off the couch and going to work for, for the campaign. So it really seems to be working very well, and I think it's going to help her out tremendously, especially as we get closer to the election. And I think that enthusiasm is just making all eyes of the political world on Democrats and Harris over the next four days, as you well know. This will be her biggest platform that she's had in her entire career thus far. Just days ago, she delivered broad strokes on her economic agenda. Not specifics quite yet, but we have a better idea. But, and I've said this repeatedly on the show, Congressman, we don't know exactly what she stands for just yet. We don't know many of her policies. What does she need to do to get Americans to buy into her vision for this country if she gets elected? Well, I think she needs to do more of what she's been doing, which is to continue rolling out elements of the campaign. It's hard to do it all at once because you don't, you, you don't want to force the public to try and drink from a fire hose. So you have to lay it out, I think, piece by piece as you move forward. And I think they've been doing that uh, pretty effectively. And as you pointed out, you know, they're starting to work on the economic message and lay out some of those key pieces. But I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, the public isn't looking so much for a litany of policy proposals. They really want a sense of where they think this is this person will take the country, whether they think this person cares about them and their er, their concerns and their interests. And I think she's been doing a great job of conveying that and touching people and tapping into that energy uh, as the uh, campaign has been building. Congressman, you keep saying she needs to do what she is doing right now, continue it, but we don't have any more details about what she's been doing. She hasn't really talked to the media. The rallies have stayed minimal. What more can we get from her? Uh, the public doesn't seem dissatisfied. I know the media has been talking a lot about we need to have a press conference, and I'm confident those will come. And, you know, it is a little funny because, you know, Trump isn't really holding press conferences either. And when he does, he's like yelling, like at the National Association of Black Journalists, he's yelling insults at people. So I think the contrast is actually pretty compelling. And the public seems to think that, too. As long as she keeps reaching out to people and talking about the issues that they care about in a way that they seem to like, uh, you know, especially issues like, say, for example, abortion, I think she's going to continue to rise in the polls. I, I don't know that I've ever seen a four weeks in politics like this, certainly at the presidential level. Even Barack Obama had a longer ramp up uh, to hit the point that she's hitting right now. I don't know that, uh, you know, as they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think it ain't broke. So <laughs> right. uh, I'd, I'd encourage her to do more of the same. 
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.